After supper, I'm off to bed. We're inside the uh, local Chukchi dwelling, known as a Yaranga, made out of reindeer skin and wooden poles. It's freezing in here. Ice covering the inside. It's about minus 30 Celsius outside. Can't be that much warmer in here. And this is where I'm sleeping for the night, inside one of these which is sort of a tent within a tent, again made out of reindeer skin, wooden poles. I can see that Elvis's decorator has been here. Fantastic. It's like a reindeer in here. Uh, they've told me you just sleep in here, no sleeping bag, um, no blankets, just the candles and, and body heat to keep you warm. So, time for bed. <sighs> Believe it or not, as temperatures plummeted to 60 below outside, the Yaranga's inner sanctum kept me warm as toast. <laughs> it's so cold out here. No gloves. Your Despite thousands of years of adaptation, the climate is so harsh that few Chukchi stay here to endure it. How many people live in your group? <laughs> Nine. Nine people in the world. So the size of the group is quite small. So in Amgoya Matanra, there are only six brigades like here. And is that because life is so difficult here? Yes, you're right. Now, now why are you repairing this now? It's like a sled of some sort. You're moving. How often do you have to move? Always. And it's always dictated by what the reindeer need. The Chukchi's ancestors had followed the reindeer eastwards. After thousands of years, they ended up here at the eastern tip of Russia. But they couldn't go any further and were forced to make this inhospitable corner of the world their home. The ebb and flow of Chukchi life is determined entirely by the reindeer that they herd. The things they eat, the clothes they wear, even the dwellings they live in, they all come from the reindeer. And this time of year, life is getting pretty difficult, so the herd needs to move on so that it can scrape subsistence out of the snow-covered ground here. What we're seeing right now is the village packing up to move on after the herd. Herding the reindeer together and pulling a few of them off so that they can drag the sledges with the tents. Victor and his family are moving off, following their reindeer to new pastures, living proof that humans can adapt and survive in these extremes, and a lesson in just how little we really need to get by. But there's more. My genetic trail tells me that around 15,000 years ago, a tiny group of these Chukchi's ancestors survived to make an impossible leap into the new world.
a journey which began with Niazov's family in Central Asia, then moved east along the length of Russia, left the ancestors of these incredibly tough Chukchi poised to conquer a new continent. But there was a seemingly impassable barrier to their route. The frozen reaches of the Bering Sea separate Russia from the Americas. We're here at the Bering Strait, and it is unbelievably cold here. Clogged with ice for about six months of the year, not even an icebreaker can get through. And yet we know that the ancestors of the Native Americans made it through here about 15,000 years ago at the height of the last ice age. How could they have made a trip like that? I followed the trail of the first humans from Africa to the eastern tip of Russia. I've met their descendants, the Chukchi. But blocked from reaching America by the Bering Sea, I can go no further. Yet I know the blood of these Arctic herdsmen connects them to Native Americans. How did they get there? In an ironic twist, the Ice Age that drove us out of Africa now provided the Chukchi's ancestors with an escape route. As temperatures fell and sea levels dropped, a new landmass called Beringia was exposed from beneath the Bering Sea. This new land connected the Russian Far East to Alaska. The reindeer headed for new pastures. The few survivors followed them, taking mankind into uncharted territory, into the new world. The sea level was, was very much lower about, you could build a 40-story building, <laughs> you know, to tell you how much the sea level had changed. But they couldn't go very far. They were sort of stuck in northern Alaska because of all the ice. And behind them, things weren't much better. As the Ice Age came to an end, sea levels rose again, marooning the first Americans on a tiny pocket of land. Yet they survived. An escape route appeared. The first Americans arrived here only about 13,000 years ago. And they probably walked from Alaska down a, a corridor that existed certainly by 11,000 years ago uh, along the eastern side of the Rocky Mountains. There may have still been ice to the east and the west, but there was an ice-free corridor that they could have walked down when they arrived in North America. It was essentially an empty environment from their perspective with lots of rich resources. A journey that had begun in Africa, divided in Central Asia, had now reached the last continent. For thousands of years, they had endured the most extreme conditions on Earth. And now, this branch of mankind had found a new home. Our ancestors were pretty tough people. They'd survived drought, famine, and an ice age in order to get this far. Yet our genetic results tell us that the first group to make it through to the Americas had been whittled down to as few as 10 or 20 individuals. Today, their descendants are carrying, written in their DNA, evidence of those hardships thousands of years ago. But when they did get through, what was their reward? A land of plenty. They'd never had it so good. After 10,000 years of struggling through the tundra, these Arctic hunters hit the jackpot. As the ice gave way to the rolling prairies, they found a new land in which to live and prosper. Their numbers swelled, and in only 800 years, they had peopled both North and South America. I'm off to meet an ancient tribe who traced their family line back to Siberia to the ancestors of the Chukchi who made that first migration into the Americas. They're the Navajo and they live here in Canyon de Chez, Arizona. The Navajo Indians have been living in North America ever since their Chukchi ancestors first arrived. Canyon de Chez is one of their most sacred sites. I wanted to tell them about the genetic trail that had led